In this Webflow tutorial, I'll teach you how to style your list items or your dot points into a custom image or illustration. Let's check out an example website. In this example website, zestyagency.com.au slash masterclass, this is actually built using a rich text element using the list item. And this is actually a custom tick on the left-hand side that replaces the default native Webflow dot. Let's take a look at the example website Ski Tutor right here. You can see this is the default Webflow dot. It's just a regular dot. But what we're going to do is we're going to style that dot into whatever you like. In this case, it's a tick. So let's go ahead and jump into Webflow. All right, guys, now that I'm in Webflow, there's two ways we can do this. One is we can add a rich text element. So we can go ahead and type in rich text using Command E or hit this plus button right here and dragging the rich text right here into the canvas. And you'll notice with the rich text element, which I explained in my previous tutorial, so feel free to check it out. One is an ordered list, which is essentially numbers, one, two, three, four. And the other one is unordered list, where it's just dot points. So we can actually just get rid of everything and just leave the unordered list, which is the dot point. And the fantastic thing about this, as I mentioned earlier, is the client can easily just hit enter and they can add additional dot points in the editor or the CMS. So let's go ahead and style this. But before I do that, let me just explain what this really is. So if I hit the list right here, go ahead and hit settings. You can see right here, it says list settings, unordered or ordered. So like I mentioned, the difference is the numbered and the dot points. And below that, we even have no bullets and bullets. So by default, this is what it looks like. In order to change it, we need to apply a custom code. So in order to do this, we can go ahead and add an embed code like so, and we can go ahead and paste in our code, which I'll leave in the description. So now that I've pasted my code, let's quickly just look at what's going on. Right now we're using a style tag, which is just opening and closing in, in typical coding fashion, and it's affecting a specific class. In this case, it's affecting the root class, which is LI, which means list item. So that's what we're doing. And then in the list item, we're defining that it should have zero padding and the list style type is none. So this just means it's going to remove the default dot point or the numbered point. And instead, in this list item, we're going to add a background image that is referencing a URL. And I recommend just uploading that specific icon you want in Webflow. And right now, it's setting that image, it's defining more styles to have no repeat, to add a bit of padding adding a position of that specific dot point and adding the background size. So really, this is just typical code that you're actually doing natively in the Webflow Designer, except there's no native way of doing it. So this is applying custom code. So let's go ahead hit save and close. And you'll notice that everything is working. Right now, I'm actually pulling an image of myself. So if we actually go to assets right here, I've already uploaded an SVG right here of this tick icon. And if you guys are wondering where I got this from, it's from iconsfinder.com. So you can go ahead and visit that website. Let's go ahead and quickly take a look at it. I can go ahead and type in tick, for example. And here I can hit free. And there's really nice free illustrations. But again, we don't have to upload an icon. It could be a JPEG image or a PNG or SVG. So once that's done, I've gone ahead and just uploaded this into my asset panel. And if I hit this three dot icon and I hit open link, you can see this is the link that is currently stored in the Webflow server. And this is the icon of this shield. So if I just copy this link, we can go ahead and reference it back to our custom code right here. We can go ahead and replace that background image URL right here with the new link. Hit save and close. And you notice everything is now put into this shield icon. And that's it. That's essentially how you do it. But you got to understand what the code is doing. For example, I'm looking at this. And there's so much spacing on the left hand side. Why is that? That's because if I hit list right here, we can see we have a padding 40 pixels. So it's pretty easy to fix, you know. I would recommend putting a class, or you can use the root class right here, or unordered list, and go ahead and get rid of that padding to be zero. And let's just say, for example, you want this icon to be a bit bigger. So you just go back to the code, and hopefully you guys know by now the premise of how this works. We can just read. Padding left, maybe I want to increase it to two rems. And then background size, maybe I want to increase this icon to from one rem to two rems. Just for exaggeration, hit save and close. And you notice it's really big now. In fact, it's so big that it's protruding outside of the box. So perhaps I'll move it back to one rem. 
and one rem. And perhaps what I'll do here is in the list item, I can go ahead and hit all list items and I can go ahead and just add some margin top and bottom and that will make it a lot more space. So as you can see, that is done and perhaps the spacing is a bit too like wide. So I can go back to the code embed and I can change that padding left to one rem, hit save and that has put it much, much closer. So feel free to play around with the code. Again, this tutorial, I can't sit here and just tell you exactly what to do because I don't know what image you're gonna upload, but that is essentially the premise. If you guys get really stuck and you don't know what you're doing, you can actually paste this code into ChatGPT and say, hey, ChatGPT, I'm using this code in Webflow, it's doing this, but how do I do that? And then it'll spit out the new code and you can go ahead and play around with it. So feel free to reverse engineer everything. That's my whole point of these tutorials is for you to learn. It's not necessarily for me to tell you exactly what to do. Now, the next thing is if I actually have another list in my website, you'll notice in my nav bar, I actually already have list items. Don't ask me why, but you can see we have this list item and it's applying this specific icon to all list items. But let's just say, for example, I only want to apply it to a certain list item. How do we do that? Very easy. We just add a class and apply that code only to that class. So we can go ahead and hit the list. Go ahead and give it a class because right now it's affecting all lists, this pink tag right here. We give it a class of, let's say, custom dash list, hit enter. And we can go ahead and go back into the code and we can go ahead and apply it only to that class. So right now, li just means all list items. It's applying to that pink tag. If you go back to my class tutorial, you'll understand what I mean. So I'm going to replace this with dot and then the class name. That's how we target it. And the one below that, I'm also going to add dot class name spacebar. And that's going to affect only this class in this list item right here. Now, if I hit save and close, you'll notice it only affects this one right here because it has the class and not any other list throughout your website. So I hope you guys found this video super helpful. I try to go in detail. Let me know how you go and I'll see you in the next video. Feel free to check out more of my videos right here and may peace be with you. Peace.